Hello there everyone, and welcome back to my Minecraft world. My name is Shells, and today we are going to be doing a little tour of my forest cathedral. <laughs> now, I know that at this point, I've basically already covered this kind of to death, just because I had the front facade here featured in my bell tower uh, tutorial video, and then of course I also featured it for my spire. So you've seen plenty of the Forest Cathedral, but I still wanted to do a, an, a, an actual tour to show you a little bit more behind the scenes. So we're going to go ahead and start with the front facade here. I know I already covered most of it, but uh, I'll go ahead and talk about some of the other nuanced details and whatnot. Um, the first thing I wanted to talk about is the main theme that I picked for the cathedral itself. I was trying very, very hard to not just, you know, shove in a bunch of trees. Um, I wanted this to be a forest cathedral, but with no actual trees in the design anywhere. Um, the closest I have to any sort of tree-like design would maybe arguably be in the, the flying buttresses here on the pinnacles. Uh, because they're kind of vaguely shaped like pine trees, but there's enough, uh not pine tree things that it doesn't really it, it kind of gives the idea of pine trees without actually just blatantly being pine trees and that was sort of the theme that i wanted to convey with the entirety of this cathedral the main symbol that is repeated throughout the cathedral is actually these vine shapes and the swirly dirlies that it kind of makes uh, this is more of like a whiplash sort of look, uh, which is more of like a, an Art Nouveau sort of movement thing. It, you don't really find uh, that sort of swirl shape in uh, Gothic architecture as much. They tend to stick mostly with geometric shapes. Uh, mostly because you'd imagine trying to make a stained glass window that is exactly this shape. Like, who does that? That would be strange. Uh, I think it would also be a little bit structurally unsound to have, this is supposed to be a bar tracery, it's made with stonework, uh, and doing a swirl like that would basically be impossible. You might also be thinking, well, why go with a swirl? Well, besides the fact that I like swirls, um, I also thought it fit rather well with the theme of being a forest cathedral. Main reason being is that a swirl, uh, especially in like Polynesian cultures, is a symbol of new life because it, uh, if you look at the way a new fern looks, it creates a natural little swirl. And that's a common theme in Polynesian cultures. And similarly, for my cathedral here, I wanted to kind of use that to show off uh, hints of vines and, in general, make this look full of life. Now to talk about the rose window. I know a lot of you have asked about how to do the rose window in particular for this build, and... Uh, uh, so the main thing you have to keep in mind when doing these windows is you have to pick blocks that are able to be uh, rotated all the way around. That means that you can't actually use slabs of any sort. Um, because So you'll notice that I don't. I use either full blocks, stairs, or trap doors. I can't use slabs or fences because while you can have the slabs going this way, you can't rotate it up to repeat the same design. And all I did was I made one design that I could put down here and then rotate it over here. And then I tried my best to fill in the gaps as best as I could, keeping in mind that this was on a 45 degree angle, so I kind of blocked that off. I'm not entirely happy <laughs> with the but the shape of this in particular is so wonky but when you are glancing at it you're not immediately impressed upon by oh that looks weird because your eye actually gradually goes to the things that are finished aka the 90 degree angles and the 45 degree angles and your mind kind of glosses over this really really ugly one off to the side 
Otherwise, I tried to implement, you know, circles going around there, made smaller circles on the 45 degree angle, and then I tried my best to put circles all the way around. The reason that this almost makes it a trifoil shape is because I was actually having a hard time making a circle in this spot. I couldn't get a circle to look right because it's on a weird angle. Um, and it turned out that I could make a trefoil shape. So I tried to mimic that over here. And then when I tried to implement that over there, it didn't work. So I just left those ones as circles. Oh well. When talking about this uh, front facade here, I also have to point out uh, the elephant behind the wall here. The fact that this is a huge fake wall. And in fact, this entire front section sticks out a great ways uh, away from the edge here. You see how much space I had to work with that I had basically just left empty on the inside. Um, <laughs> and then I also had this problem where I was constantly uh, trying to force myself to work with this buttress here because I wanted the buttress to be exactly the same as over here, but it was recessed it from the this over here. So I added the the stripes off to either side here to kind of uh, beef it out a little bit. Um, so it looks a little bit more natural against that wall. But I was, again, running into this buttress here. I, yeah, you can see that this buttress is not the same size as this one. Uh, this is a three wide and this ended up turning into a four wide. And that was just to bridge that gap because I was really struggling. Normally these uh, archivolts go one to another. They're interconnected. Um, and I had this big empty space between them because I didn't want to bring this archivolt forward any more than it already was. Uh, and so I kind of just like this is on the same level as this and I just brought it down. <laughs> it was a little bit awkward to deal with, but... Oh well, I still like the way it looked and, uh, you know, it still looks impressive, uh, so I'm, I'm okay with it. Moving on to look at the rest of the exterior here. I, of course, did the exterior last, but we're going to go ahead and cover it now because we're already here. Um, <laughs> I tend to build all of my builds from the inside out so long as I can help it. There have been a few exceptions to this rule, of course, but eh. The main thing I wanted to get across here is I really wanted to play with gradients. Gradients is something that I've kind of struggled with in the past and I was, I've was i been trying to force myself to use them more. So you can see I had a big gradient leading in the roof. I decided to add in some nice <laughs> melon blocks because that, that totally fits. I think part of that challenge is to use blocks that I wouldn't normally use at all. Um, and it actually kind of works. It adds just that little pop of highlight. I don't have too much of it, just a little bit here and there. And I especially put it into my flying buttresses, as well as a little bit of the glazed terracotta there, the lime glazed terracotta, because I really wanted these flying buttresses to stand out from the rest of the build so you could see that little pop of color. Um, everything else is fairly neutral and... I, I wasn't trying to go too horribly dark, except for in these buttresses. I went as far black as you can possibly go with uh, black concrete. Uh, and then I was trying for a... There's no real good transition between the coal blocks to the brown. There's no, like, extra deep brown. This is the darkest it goes. So it's kind of a bit of a jump going from this brown to the, the, the coal block there, but... I think it honestly worked. It almost reminds me of the dirt block from, you know, the standard Minecraft dirt block. I think the other thing I need to point out about the exterior here is actually the shape of my roof. I didn't want it to be just a straight, rah, rah, straight up and down roof. Uh, I wanted to be a little bit different with it, partially because I am notorious at not being very good at building roofs. So I wanted to try to do something different. Granted, I tried the exact same thing with that roof over there and I didn't like it at all. So uh, I was glad that this one at least turned out. Um, I ended up, instead of going straight up and down, I tried to go for more of this OG curve. 
And that kind of was a bit of a struggle to make as I went around the curve of the apps here. It was rather challenging to say the least. Um, I do have a trick that I follow to do these, but even with that, there are some uh, problem spaces, uh, shall we say? I'll cover more of how to do that stuff when I talk about making domes, because I use the same technique for that. I'm also going to go ahead and point out my uh, <laughs> my roof that I added to the top of the lantern here. I didn't get into how to build this in the lantern tutorial video, partially because it was kind of a pain to do, uh, and I'm not entirely sure exactly what I did. I extended out a line here and then tried to like make more of a curve out away from those following that same line and then came up and met them uh, just to give a little bit more shape to the actual roof. And obviously you can't see very much of that from the ground. Um, so I had to over exaggerate it in some places. Um, and while I could get some of the dark colors all the way down to here, I couldn't over here. So I just have this spattering of the dark that you can barely see from the ground, but it kind of brings your eye to make it, to give the illusion that that goes all the way down, even though it doesn't. Um, and then I, of course, added a swirly dirly around to the edge. Um, again, the swirl was kind of the theme of my whole build here. You can see it. I, again, used it up here, though, apparently I, uh, I have a spot missing over here. Whoops. Haha. -ha. All better. No idea how I missed that. <laughs> I also had to deal with a lot of these holes on the roof sort of problems uh, going into some of my decorations. So obviously this is completely made out of trapdoors and walls because directly underneath is one of my skylights, one of the main things lighting up the floor at the very bottom of the center of the cathedral here. Um, and for the most part, I did my usual trick of just using glass with some, uh, you know, some of the same colored blocks behind a moss block, moss carpet on top, nothing underneath. I suppose I could put a trap door there, but I'm not really worried about people landing on my roof and being like, oh, there's a hole here. <laughs> um, but yeah, that way from a distance, you actually can't really see the glass. And uh, that's something that's really nice about using these gradients is that you can hide in a lot more of those little holes because it's so busy that your mind just kind of automatically blends this all together into one. Whereas if this was all just one single block for the entire roof, I bet your eye would just be drawn in by the glass blocks really, really easily. And you'd be like, there's something wrong here. And of course, the other thing I'm going to point out here is actually these diagonal windows on the haps and the ambulatory uh, these are inevitably going to be the hardest windows to have to make. Not those ones because they're flat, but the diagonal ones. In order to make these windows properly, I actually had to make both uh, a window design for the interior as well as another one for the exterior. And I tried very, very hard to keep it as similar to the base design, aka this one here, with some of the main features. Um, most prominently, of course, being the swirl occupying the space where an oculus should go. I had almost this teardrop symbol and some uh, of the swirls down below facing each other. And I tried to represent those same things on the diagonal windows. Um, you get the swirl, teardrop, swirly things. And again, swirl, sort of teardrop, best as I could do, and swirly things. Ugh, it was kind of a pain. I think I'm going to go ahead and finish talking about the exterior here. I think I've covered the main important parts anyway. Um, so let's go ahead and go into the actual cathedral. Now the first thing you'll notice is that this room looks significantly different than it did when I showed it off before. Um, I did not like the way it looked. I was just trying to keep it as open as I possibly could to try to show off what it looked like, um, but I decided that I wanted to transform it into more of a hallway. So, of course, all I did to do that was 
make a bunch of fake walls. So this is where the actual wall is supposed to go. And I just came into here and slapped a new wall uh, and moved the, uh, the fonts forward. And then of course I did the same thing for the ceiling. You look at the ceiling and this is where it could have gone up to. And there's this big empty space here. Um, it just makes this whole hallway feel a little bit more finished. Before it was just uh, kind of an awkward space. So now it's more of a, an actual hallway. And you can see, you know, it leads. You got the, the stuff leading to the nave. And here we can go to either Bell Tower with my uh, hee hee massive, you know, massive spiral staircases. Um, but yeah, I think it works. It's a little bit awkward still, but it's not nearly as, as awkward. And then we enter the nave. Um, and yes, I did go through all of the effort trying to add in as many details that would actually formally make the cathedral on the inside here so that way it wasn't just big and empty and I will admit that to be able to know what details to add I was following a, a virtual tour um, there was uh, the virtual tour of the Basilica of the Sacred Heart which is, I believe is in New Jersey um, they had a, a wonderful tour that allowed me to just like move around in the cathedral and look at what I wanted to look at. It was great. So, uh, here's an admission. I am not Catholic and I don't know what goes inside my cathedral. So I'm, I'm really glad that I had some help with the virtual tour going in here. And I'll admit that I tried to keep everything, um, as true to what the virtual tour represented, but I don't actually know what I'm talking about with any of this stuff. Um, so I did my best, uh, and uh, if I did anything wrong, you can feel free to let me know. He, I'll go ahead and focus on the maid part. I do know what I'm talking about, at least a little bit here. Um, and that is how I actually made my vaults and uh, my thought process behind them. First of all, my idea was I really wanted uh, to make these pillars kind of look like trunks of trees um, and any of these extensions to look like branches off of the trees, including the extensions for the actual vault itself. So what I was going for here is I was trying to go for a six-pointed vault instead of a four-pointed vault. So one, two, three four, five, six points instead of just the four corners to make the vault. Um, and then after making that, I was kind of looking at this shape and I was like, I wonder if I can mirror that where this kind of comes up and meets up with that spot there to then create another bit. I think that's okay. I think it's still structurally sound. Um, it does meet there and then that actually it's not a straight line it actually curves up through here I don't know how much you can see it's pretty dark um, but that was kind of the idea and it made an interesting geometry I kind of really liked the way it looked but it's not a traditional four-pointed arch at all um, and then my little squash vault, I decided I liked the look of that little alcove for the window. So I kind of kept that in and then just drew it out to the corners instead of coming and meeting to a center point. Again, I don't know how actually structurally sound this would be, um, but it seems sound enough to me. And it certainly looks neat. I was also, again, messing with gradients, and something that I had a lot of fun with was actually making a gradient among the leaves. You can see that each of these sections goes from the spruce leaf to the birch leaf to the mangrove leaf to jungle leaves to acacia leaves to sort of make this natural-looking gradient here. Um, it, it did mean that I had to build like the outside of the leaf and then kind of have something behind to look at, but it also let me sneak in plenty of lighting so that way it didn't look too horribly dark. You'll also note that the, the gallery up here has these aisles that look significantly darker, even though it's still the same technique with the spruce leaves down there. 
um, it, it's actually a darker coloring because these leaves have the green terracotta going behind them, whereas up here, the background for this is actually the dried kelp block. Um, now, something that's really frustrating about the dried kelp block is that it has those stupid white lines through it, and it looks horrible. Um, so I find that I can't have it exposed anywhere, and I couldn't really add it into any of the gradients. Um, I used it outside a little bit, um, but I had to be very, very touchy with how I used it because that white line just draws so much attention. But you add some spruce leaves over the top and you can barely see it. Um, and it still makes the spruce leaves actually look a little bit darker. Moving on to talk about the pipe organ here. <laughs> I, um, I actually was having fun. Um, I, I'm still working on it right at the moment, but I'm actually building a working pipe organ with the create mod, um, on a modded server that I've, I've been playing on. Um, and... I, so when I was building this cathedral, I was like, you know what? I want to add in a pipe organ. Um, and the main trick I had to do was actually to try to uh, space out these uh, the walls so that way they wouldn't connect with one another. And that way they looked like individual pipes. Then I took a bright color and added in the really dark color to kind of look like the holes that are in the pipes. Um, and... Uh, like, I don't know, I, I, I tried to count how many were going in a row, so normally a, a, uh, they divide up not only by um, the octave, but they will also divide up the pipes based off of the, the black notes, if you're the, talking about, you know, the piano, um, also called the sharps and flats. Um, so I kind of tried to keep that where this was a scale, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, um, and then added some, well, not all, I couldn't really fit, this whole little ring should have been enough to fit all of the sharps and flats for that whole thing, but it's not. But again, over here, I had a, the whole octave, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And I know that some of them are hiding, so you can't even see them. But that was my goal, was that you would have one octave, two octave, three octave, four octaves, with all of the sharps and flats being in the main central, central pillars. Um, to make the actual organ here, most of it is just lecterns. Um, I added the little lights, some little buttons off to the side to represent all of the random buttons you can find on an actual pipe organ. Um, this is supposed to be the foot pedal that makes it softer and louder. Um, and there's also supposed to be some notes you can play with your feet. I don't play the organ, um, but I've seen plenty of them. Uh, and my brother plays the organ, at least a little bit. So, yeah, I think they're neat, and I was trying really, really hard to, to give them proper representation um, with as many details as I could um, with the limitations of, mo of Minecraft here. Oh, and of course, swirly dirlies! Hee <laughs> hee! Hmm. So looking at this pipe organ, I know that when I originally built it, it was actually very much uh, asymmetrical because I wanted to make sure that each one of these pipes was actually a different length. So that way it actually looked like each one was represented by a different note. But uh, it looks like in all of my copying and pasting, I accidentally copied over this organ and pasted it to the other side. So now it's symmetrical. Oh, my hard work is ruined, ruined. I'm not going to go back and try to fix it at this point. Um, at one point, it was very much so asymmetrical. <laughs> Oops. Oh, oh, hang on. I, I think I actually have a schematic saved of it. Eh, eh. Load. Pipe organ. Yeah. Bam. All right. So to prove to you that this thing is supposed to be asymmetrical, you can very clearly see that this side is much shorter than this side. So there, ha. All right, back to the interior here. I wanted to talk about these transepts. These transepts are probably one of the hardest things I had to implement. 
Um, I got, went ahead and talked a little bit about it when I was talking about how to make your crossing, um, but I ran into a lot of problems with making this transept. One of the big ones was trying to make these windows proper. Notice something weird about this particular window? That's right, that it's because it's completely fake. Um, I hate fake windows. I hate trying to implement them, but sometimes Minecraft leaves me with no choice. For the outside of my build here, um, I actually had to squash this design a little bit. Um, it's not the full big window. Um, I was running into this corner here, so I squashed my design to fit that sort of look. So I justified adding in this fake window because if you count windows on the exterior, you clearly have one, two, three, four, five, and on the interior, you have the exact same amount of windows. So I figured it made sense. You have the same windows on the interior as you have on the exterior. I could have made it blind tracery if I really wanted to, but I wanted it to match all of the other side windows. So I put in some bits of terracotta um, to, you know, kind of make it look a little bit so that way it still glows, just like the other ones, but it's actually completely fake. Another little challenge I was facing while I was building this is that um, you'll notice that I went from using the stripped oak logs over here to suddenly switching to a green gradient. Um, and the reason why is because, uh, well, I was running into the roof. Um, <laughs> direct, well... That was a poor example, but this spot right here is actually the roof on the outside of the build. Uh, and so I was already running out of room to build these galleries. And when I kind of scrunched up the, the transepts to make up for how the outside looked, it meant that I had the roof coming in and it also made this awkward line right here. You know, these I have nice, normal looking vaults, but this one ended up getting really squashed on the side and that's because the roof is on the direct other side of this line here. Um, this, these transepts were just giving me so many problems, but I figure that most people who are up on this gallery, um, their first impression of vaults is going to be, oh, some proper vaults, these look really cool. And by the time you get around to these areas, you're not really paying any attention to it and you don't necessarily notice it. Um, something else I added here was I wanted this walkway to extend all the way around the cathedral. Um, most galleries don't do this. I just wanted it to. Um, but what that meant is I actually had to do yet another entry room on these transepts in here. And I was pretty lazy and just walled it off and called it good because this would normally lead directly outside. Bam. Um, but it doesn't. So you have to go through this little awkward hallway instead. <laughs> Speaking of funky vaults on the level of the gallery here... <laughs> I finished the ambulatory down here, and can I just point out how beautiful and magnificent this whole section is? I spent a lot of time trying to make this uh, ambulatory look really, really nice. Um, and I got completely done with it, and then realized that I needed to do another one in order to implement my wraparound gallery here. Uh, so I, uh, I, I fudged it. Uh, these are not at all proper vaults here. I, uh, honestly walled them off and then put general sort of ish, uh, ribs that mostly just curve at the very corners and are flat lines for the rest of it, uh, and kind of made them work. But yeah, I, I, I figure nobody's looking too hard at these. <laughs> and now to talk about my lantern, uh, at least the uh, interior of it. I already kind of covered the exterior. Now I think it's funny, the exterior of this window, I actually tried to make a proper swirl. Um, but for the inside, I was like, nah, I'm tired of making swirls. And I made little, tr like, sort of tree shapes instead. 
uh, the, and nobody cares. So, <laughs> um, I just thought it was fun. Um, my color scheme, I should point out, for this whole cathedral is actually a split complementary color scheme of uh, green and orange. Um, so you can see it in all of my windows where I kind of fade from green through yellow to orange and back to green, um, including the windows over here. Again, we have green to the yellow to orange at the very edges. Um, split complementary, in case you don't know, is uh, you know, a complementary color scheme is going from one side of the color wheel to the other side, um, which for green would mean that the complementary of green is red. Split complementary is to take one of the colors that is next to the complementary. So in this case, you go from green to orange, which orange is right next to red on the color wheel. The other way you could take it is you could actually go from green to purple is another split complementary color scheme. I really like split complementary color schemes, so that's what I did. You could argue that I added enough yellow that it would make it more of an analogous color scheme, but the main emphasis points are green and orange, so I'm gonna leave it at that. <laughs> Um, I really liked the way that the interior of my lantern turned out here. Um, I ended up doing almost, uh, well, I took some of the gold blocks and went to honeycomb and then to pumpkins to really emphasize it. It actually goes to a deeper color here, the more of a reddish color, um, just because of darkness. Um, there's obviously holes poked right here that are letting in the skylights so that way it's nice and bright here. Um, and then it just naturally faded to more of a reddish orange towards the center. And I love it. I loved how that turned out. Um, <laughs> 10 out of 10. Um, I do note that the, the where I placed this light ended up getting completely blocked um, down here. Um, I think I actually extended that block there because I didn't like the way it was lighting up this wall down here. You saw just poking out that one little block made this whole wall illuminate and I wanted this wall to remain really, really dark um, because this is the don't care, you're not looking at that sort of wall. All right, now I gotta figure out which one I have to replace that one. Um, so trying to make it darker lets the parts that I want you to look at pop a whole lot more than if all of these were lit up and bright. I also mirrored, um, I have this, you know, the green going around the very center. I actually did the exact same thing in my vaults here, but with lights on the inside. Um, just thought it was fun to sort of mirror that same look, but with a nice bright pop of color. Now something I'm going to point out about the lighting choices that I made here um, is that I actually illuminated all of my windows with natural skylight. Um, and in fact, I also have the, the natural light in a couple of other places, like in here to illuminate this section here. Um, just to make it, well, I really like the idea of making all of the the windows naturally lit rather than artificially, partially because it's a lot easier to light them that way, but also because of this effect. If it just go time set midnight and watch all of them turn into shadows. Um, I really like this effect because then for one thing you can tell whether it's night or whether it's day during, you know, while you're in your build. Um, and it makes more sense to me this way. If you are in a cathedral at night, the windows aren't going to be lit up unless they have like a spotlight shining at them from outside or something like that. So I really like this look. <laughs> <sighs> I suppose I should actually start talking about some of these things that I don't really understand that are in the choir. I did try to look up a whole bunch of reference pictures and uh, obviously I had the virtual tour helping me out a lot. Um, so I'm going to briefly explain what I added here, but uh, 
I think I got some things wrong. So uh, I'm not going to present this in a this is what you add in a cathedral sort of way because I'm honestly not entirely sure. Um, I think the main importance, well, for one thing, I had to raise up the entirety of the choir. Um, this adds more importance to it, makes it look interesting. Um, and then you also have on the edges here, uh, this is a platform for the priest to actually go up and, you know, give his speech to the rest of the nave. Had to be elevated so that way people could see it. I added this green section up above just so that way it draws your eye a little bit more because this is supposed to be eye-catching. This is what you're looking at as the front center stage here. And then of course the seats on either side are for the choir to sit. Um, this is, you know, they sit up here, have places of importance. Um, rather than the pews where it's all just one big bench, they actually have individual seats for each person. And yes, I made mine too wide, but that's just because I think that one wide felt a little bit too squishy and crowded. So this way you get a little bit of, uh, you know, elbow room going here. Um, I also had to elevate these even further to make uh, a front row and a back row. And then we come to the altar over here. Um, I tried to make it look... Uh, I added things like these lanterns on the side with dark backgrounds um, because I wanted to show sort of like the statues of saints going all the way up. Um, this is like a very highly decorated spot um, because it's the main altar. Um, it's where everybody comes up and actually is able to worship at the altar. But yeah, otherwise, big bright colors, um, bright themes, uh, a nice archway up here, um, just to make this whole area feel special and stand out. I didn't know what to do with the top though, so it's kind of flat and ugly, but don't look at it too hard. <laughs> All right, the next thing we get to talk about is actually going up this giant spiral staircase. Climbing lots of stairs, climbing lots of stairs. There's a lot of stairs, climbing lots of stairs. <sighs> stairs. <laughs> All right, now that we are here in the bell tower, uh, again, I did talk about a lot of this stuff uh, in my bell tower uh, tutorial video. But uh, I'm going to go ahead and bang my head against walls and talk about the some other random things. For one thing, I'm sure you noticed that I have some of these made out of the weathered copper and some out of the, the main copper. I really wanted a nice brass colored look for these bells and I found I wasn't happy with any of them. I don't even like the way that these copper bells look and unfortunately there's not really anything I can do. So I tried to make the bells look a little bit different from each other by adding some of the weathered copper in as well. Uh, I don't know if I like it or not. Um, they're also not really secured properly. Um, what I probably should have done, honestly, is add a little section, like holding, to add some sort of framework going up the center here to kind of look like there's something holding these bells in place. These bells are meant to look heavy. Um, but I, I just, I didn't like the look of that. It was crowding these bells a little bit too much. And of course, I had troubles figuring out what I wanted to do for the clapper. And my husband was just like, why don't you put another right block? And I'm like, well, yeah, that would look great. But like, I was also kind of hoping to make this look like you could build it in survival mode and not kill yourself. But I made the exception in the end for the netherite clappers. Um, yeah. If I were to build this in survival mode, I would definitely use a different block because uh, there's uh, I, I'm not collecting that much netherite. Sorry, not gonna happen. But <laughs> it was kind of fun and it does match the, the same color tone as the rest of the bells. It just makes them look exceptionally expensive. Hee <laughs> hee. Anyway, I think I've pretty well covered everything about the Forest Cathedral that I really wanted to stop and actually talk to you about. Um, I had a lot of fun building this thing. I know it took me a really long time, but that's for good reason. I, I wanted to make sure that this was 
the best thing I had ever built. And I think I really lived up to that expectation. Thank you all so much for watching this little tour of mine. I'm really glad I got to do this tour with you and I hope you enjoyed it as much as I enjoyed it. So I will go ahead and see you in the next video. Goodbye! Climbing lots of stairs. There's a lot of stairs. Climbing lots of stairs. And there's a lot of stairs to climb.